A few weeks ago, I did a video talking about all of the community plugins that I'm using. I got down to 46 plugins by the end of it because I deleted some as I was recording it. And I immediately got a really good comment, a few really good comments about how I should do the same thing. But for core plugins, this is that video. So let's get right into it. And I'm going to show you every core plugin that is in Obsidian and which ones I've enabled and how I use them. Core plugins in Obsidian are a little bit different from the community plugins in that they were made by the Obsidian team. So they are a little bit safer than the community plugins, which really any developer can make. So there is like a vetting process still for the community plugins to be put into this marketplace. However, it's obviously not the same as them coming straight from the Obsidian developer team themselves. So let's go into the core plugins. And the first one is one that I don't use. It is audio recorder. So this is a way to just record audio and save it in Obsidian. I don't tend to do this because I don't really see a need for it. If I were going to use audio, then I would just record it separately and then I can still put it into Obsidian, but it can be useful. Like if you're taking notes, maybe in class, maybe you want to record some audio as well, but just be aware that things like audio or PDFs are going to bloat your Obsidian vault. Backlinks is one thing that I do use quite a bit. I always recommend that you enable this. And if you go into the options here, I also have this backlink in document enabled. And what that means is if I go to, let's say my productivity page, I can go to the bottom of it. And I will also see all of these backlinks, the linked mentions. Now, typically you would find that here. There's a linked mentions pane here that does do the same thing, but you know, I kind of got used to having it here for Rome. And also I really like that if, for example, I have this other note also, I'm going to have the linked mentions of productivity here, but I'll also be able to see the linked mentions of the second note down here. And that's just kind of cool, right? Like I can look at them at the same time. Whereas if I relied on the pain, then I would only see whichever one was in focus. By the way, I got a few questions asking how I managed to get it to show up in Markdown. So this is what it looks like normally with just the core plugin. I do have a community plugin that is kind of related that I did talk about, and that is query control. And it adds some additional options to this so that instead of having it like, for example, just in Markdown like this, I can see it in Markdown that is rendered. So with this ticked on, I can actually see, you know, the, the headings and the bullets and that rather than seeing just the source, which I find useful, but that one's a community plugin. So let's go back to the core ones. Bookmarks, I have a whole video on this. Check out the video over there. So I still do use them. I have them all here and this is constantly changing depending on what I'm working on. But yes, check out the video for more on that. Canvas, I also have a video on. It is basically a way to create this like infinitely scrolling, well, canvas or space in Obsidian. Um, I won't go into it here, check out the video on that, but it is a great way to kind of visually lay out some of your notes. So you can embed some notes within this canvas or just create things within canvas itself. Command palette, I always enable this. And I think if you don't already use it, you can do a lot. You can save a lot of time by just learning some of the keyboard shortcuts. Command palette opens up this like easy dialogue for, for well going through different things you can do in Obsidian. And so from here I can do command P and I can go through a lot of different commands, anything from going from one tab to another to things that are specifically tied to plugins. And the cool thing is that you can make hotkeys for any command. And so if there's one command that you find yourself using a lot, then I would go ahead and also create a hotkey for that. And that's not a plugin, but it is just in settings here. So you can check for the different ones that are already available. I've got 378 apparently. I definitely don't remember all of them, but some of them I do. 
Then there's daily notes here. Now I have said in the past that this is something that you should enable when you're new to Obsidian and I still totally stand by that. The only reason that I've disabled it now is because I use a community plugin that I think is better. This is a theme in the core plugins. I use the periodic notes plugin instead of daily notes. And that's mainly because a periodic notes plugin does not just daily, but also yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily. So I just find it a little bit more useful and with them turned on, I don't really have a need for the daily notes. But if you're not using periodic notes or maybe you just want the simplicity of just having daily notes and not, none of the other stuff, well then go ahead and just turn this on. File recovery, I wouldn't use Obsidian without this. This is actually really cool. So you can go into file recovery here. You can set Obsidian to take snapshots of the current state of Obsidian so that if you lose data through some faults of your own, right? Because all of this data is in your local machine anyway. So it's not like Obsidian itself can lose the data. But if you made a mistake and accidentally deleted a bunch of stuff, you can go in here and view some of the snapshots for a particular file and see like, oh, on Sunday at this time, it looked like this. And then before that, it looks like this. And you can copy it to the keyboard or you can kind of do a diff to see like what changed from one to the other. So you can see I added here a new date and I kind of added this phrase as well. So I would always enable that. The files plugin lets you see files and folders in your vault. I mean, some of these core plugins, like I, I think they shouldn't be plugins. I think they should just be features, but this lets you see that file explorer on the left. So normally you'll, you'll have this open. I like to hide it because I just use keyboard shortcuts for both the left side panel and the right one. However, you should be able to see this. You'll have like a little toolbar here where you'll be able to open up the, the files one. And that will only happen if you have this enabled. There's a format converter. Now this is like a, a plugin that's really only useful when you're moving to Obsidian from something else. I believe I used this when I switched to Obsidian from Rome actually. So you would enable that and then go to format converter and it's going to give you a few options. Yeah, so Rome is still here. Now they've got bear as well. There are a few things that you can tick on depending on what you need. Start the conversion. However, do backups before you do this, just in case things don't work out quite the way you want them to. But after the fact, after you've already moved everything over, or if you're just starting new, starting from, from nothing in Obsidian, then I don't think you really need to enable that. Graph view I still have enabled, although I must say I don't use it all that much. Graph view is a very cool way to visualize your notes, but it can choke up when you have a lot of notes, which I do. So I've still got it enabled, but the way that I use it is through the bookmark. So I have some graphs here that are not everything. Well, this one is everything, but I more often do like these snapshots of smaller topics or like heavily filtered graphs than just everything. Note Composer is really good. Okay, so if you go into settings here, then you can choose what you want it to do. So you can say whether you, when you highlight something and you extract it, do you want it to be linking to the new file? Actually, just let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so let's say you have two notes here, note one and note two, and then note one, let's say just gets really big. This is a section heading and some stuff here. Um, and let's say you have this a few times, right? And note one is getting to that point where it's like, mm, I'm not sure maybe I should actually break this up into a second note. So what you can do is you can highlight this heading and then you can hit command P to bring up the note composer and you can say extract this heading. Now, if you click on it, then um, it's going to prompt you for the name of the other note. So then you can hit enter to create. And now where that entire heading was, there's now a new note that looks a little bit like this. And within that note is the section that you had highlighted and the stuff underneath it. So this is really good for breaking up a really long note. The other thing that you can use it for is if you have two notes, like let's say I have note one and note two, and I want to be able to merge them. 
So then I can use that note composer to merge the current file with another file. And then I'm going to say note two. And now where there was note one and note two, they both just show note two. Now, sometimes that gets a little wonky, right? Because now it has the front matter twice, but then you can just delete the parts that you don't want. And if you delete one, then the other one gets deleted because that was now the same note. So yeah, I really like the Note Composer core plugin. However, there is a community plugin that I also like called Note Refactor, which I like a little bit better and use a little bit more often, I think, because it has a few more options for what to do with the splitting and the heading. So you can just say, all of the headings in this note, I want them to be different pages, or you can say whether you want just the content or the entire heading, just a lot more options for how to split up a note. But I still use the other one as well because the merging part is really useful. All right, so then we've got outgoing links. Outgoing links shows the notes that you are linking to in the current note and also detects like the unlinked mention. So the references to that note that maybe weren't explicit links. I would always recommend that as well. So here's an example. This is the outgoing links from the test data page. So all of these links here that you see, like this one's the caching one, um, it actually goes to the cache page. So you can see at a glance, what are the things that I mentioned, the, the pages in this note that I'm mentioning, and I can go through them quickly here. And there's the unlinked mention section where then it finds every instance of the word test data or the note title. So I definitely always enable that. So two things here that I'm going to show together, outline and page preview. I kind of already showed that. So I have a shortcut for it, which is command shift O, but you can, you know, change it if you want to. It's just a really nice way to be able to see. I mean, this one is a little bit of a short note, but if I go into load testing tool, for example, now this is a, this is like one of my main, my maps of content, right? Because there are several sections to it and really they're mainly links. And so this is really, useful to kind of traverse the hierarchy, the structure of a note. And if you're creating an article, this is also a cool way to kind of do a rough draft. I like to start with the headings of an article so that I know like in advance which topics I'm going to cover and in what sequence, and then I go back and fill it in. And I also really like that I can just expand and collapse different sections. And that is a useful feature for the outline core plugin. Now these links, normally you can just, you know, click on any one of them and it'll open up the page, but sometimes you don't want to be pulled away from what you're already looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the command key and then hover over it. And this is what page preview does is it lets you see what that note that in this case, the J meter note consists of. And then when you're done with it, you can just kind of move your cursor away and you're going to be able to go back to that page. So it's just a quick way of doing it. Now I want to mention that there is a community plugin that I don't have installed right now that is called hover editor. And if you were kind of thinking like that you wanted something where when you hover over it, you can actually make a quick edit and then go back, then you should install this one. I, I really like it for that. Um, I personally just didn't find myself using it that much. I would rather just open the note and then do it that way and then flip back. But if you want a quicker way to switch between notes just by hovering over them, I do recommend hover editor. Okay, Obsidian Publish is the next one and it is a way for you to make your notes public. So I use it a lot. Now there are different ways to do this with your Obsidian notes and you don't have to use Publish because Publish is a paid feature. You can, for example, since everything in Obsidian is a markdown file, all of the notes are saved as markdown files. You can just take those markdown files and use like a static site generator like Hugo or Jekyll or, or something like that. There are a few of them and you can publish them that way. I do actually use Hugo for some parts of my site. However, my Obsidian notes, I've just found it so easy to just publish them using Obsidian Publish. And I also kind of like the idea that I'm giving the developers a little bit 
of something back. I use Obsidian heavily, obviously, and I don't balk at giving credit where credit's due and, and throwing them a few bucks every month. So I personally use it. It does make it a lot easier as well. The only thing is that now that I have quite a few notes, I think it takes a really long time for Obsidian Publish to actually come up. So this is what it looks like. It'll tell you what things have changed. I usually select all of those. These are things that are already published, but just have been modified since the last time they were published. You can unpublish some of your notes, then here are the new ones that are yet to be published. You can also go into the settings to change your like custom domain. I have mine going to notes.nicolevanderhoeven.com, for example. And this is where you can manage the publish filters that I was talking about, where you can set different folders to publish or not publish. And then there's a little button to contact support. So I do think that this is still, you know, the fewest number of clicks for between doing something and then publishing it. And I really don't want to have to think about it. Otherwise, I wouldn't publish anything. So there you go. Now it should be available on my site. Okay, so going back to these ones, Quick Switcher is a way to open up new files without clicking on this like go to file option. It is just command O and it's really the only way that I open up notes. An interesting tip from Capano or Stefan Ango, the Obsidian CEO, is that he said that he actually changes the hotkey for opening a new note so that when he does command N, instead it opens up the quick switcher, which is commando. And what that does is instead of creating a new note, it prompts him to look for existing ones. Now, personally, I just use commando a lot more than command N. And so I, I have just changed my entire workflow to prioritize the quick switcher and trying to look for a note before I create it. However, I think that it's a pretty valid one if you haven't made that change yet. And you can also create notes through here. So you can also do something like TTRPGs, new here, new note. And th what that does is it creates a new note with this folder structure. So that's something that some people don't know about Quick Switcher that I really enjoy. All right, I'm gonna move a little bit faster here. Random note is a way to open a random note. <laughs> it'll add something to your toolbar on the left here. And when you click on it, it'll just open a random note. I leave it disabled because I prefer another community plugin, which is Dice Roller, which lets you kind of do the same thing except in a more nuanced way. So instead of a completely random note, which maybe isn't that useful, you can say like, I, I want you to open a note that has a specific tag, or you know, you can do it by data view query now, which is really cool. So I prefer that and leave the random note core plugin disabled. Searching is for being able to search for keyword in all the notes and like you can do some regex stuff as well. I always leave that enabled. Um, slash commands. This is a holdover from Rome. When I moved over to Obsidian from Rome Research, I found myself using it. It is basically just a way to trigger the command. So instead of going command P and opening up the command pane and selecting commands that way, when you enable it, you do the same thing except through a slash. I haven't really found that I needed it, so I just disabled it. Slides is another one that I've talked a little bit about. At its heart, it is really cool, and it's awesome that it's baked into the core functionality of Obsidian. However, I do prefer the community plugin Advanced Slides. Slides is really good and really simple, but you can't really change much in it. You can't change the background, you can't change fonts, you can't change the layout of a slide, which is fine if you just want like a quick and dirty way to turn a note into a slide like that. However, if you actually want to present it like at a conference, which I do, then I would suggest that you use advanced slides. Check out this link to this video where I talk about my process for using that. I pretty much only use advanced slides for presentations these days if I can help it and they're not, you know, making me use something stupid like PowerPoint. Obsidian Sync is the other paid service. The first one was Publish. I do pay for Sync myself. 
I do also synchronize with Dropbox. I know you're not supposed to, but I run Dropbox and Obsidian Sync together. And I have had some issues with that. However, for the most part, I think it's fine. I also hold my Obsidian Vault as a GitHub repository. And so that's also why I'm okay with like being a little bit more risky with the Dropbox and Sync um, kind of conflicts because I know that I'll be able to see everything in GitHub and be able to roll back to previous versions. I really like Sync. The primary use case for it for me is that it goes and syncs everything to all of my devices. So if you don't know, I have a Mac OS laptop that is my main one. I have a Mac mini that I also use sometimes as a desktop. I have a Windows machine that I try never to use, but I also have a Linux laptop that I sync to. In addition, I have an iPad as my main tablet and I have um, a couple of Android phones. So Sync is really the best solution, the best easiest solution to get my notes to all of those things. Because yes, there are other solutions, but they're not as good and will require different um, kinds of finicky little solutions for different operating systems, unfortunately. Sync just works, so that's what I use. Tags here, I have it enabled. I'm not a huge fan of tags still. A few videos ago, I talked about the structure of my Obsidian Vault. Maybe go watch that to see my full feelings on tags. I use them, but barely, so I still keep them enabled. Templates, I actually have this enabled, but I don't really need it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and disable that. The reason that I don't needed is because I have the templator plugin and the templator plugin is like templates on steroids. It is just so much better in every way. And you can do a lot of complex things with templator that you can't do with templates. However, templates is a pretty good start. And if you use templates, then it's still pretty easy to migrate to templator later. So if you don't want to get into templator right now, or ever, you can just do a lot with templates actually. So I would recommend that you enable it unless you're using Templator. Unique Node Creator is a core plugin that is supposed to appeal to, I guess, the Zettelkasten crowd. The way that um, Nicholas Luhmann originally did his Slipbox or his Zettelkasten had like this really long string that composed of like the the date and then like the node and then you would add it. it was a whole thing and i get that people are trying to convert something that's analog into something that's digital and they want like the similarity of the naming structure and stuff Personally, I think we've moved on beyond that. I am not a huge proponent of Zettelkasten or any one methodology anyway. Um, but I also think like, hey, the cool thing about digital is that we can actually just search our notes. So we don't need to rely on like something that's just pure numbers um, and then have to remember it in sequence because that was important when they were being filed in an actual slip box, like an, a card catalog. But when you can just search for things by keyword or regex, then I think it's less useful. So I don't use it personally. The word count plugin just shows the word count in the status bar here. So it does show the word count there. I turn it on. I think it's only of limited use, but I still leave it on anyway. Workspaces is a really good one. I don't use it as much now as I used to because a lot of my use for it has moved over to bookmarks. However, workspaces are a way to save a specific configuration of Obsidian. So for example, I can show my workspaces here. So Eurostar was the last conference that I spoke at. And in it, I was doing a demo of Obsidian. So I, if I, if I open this workspace, it opens up all of the tabs of Obsidian that I wanted to show in that. Um, and so that one is really useful. I have also done this for like specific um, things that I'm working on. Like maybe if I wanted to have this sort of configuration with, with maybe the files, um, the file explorer here, you can actually save that as, as a workspace. So you can um, go into manage workspace layout and I'll save this as demo, for example. 
and I can save that. And just to show you the other ones, I'll go to this one for my game. So this opens up the specific notes that I want. And it's just a way to quickly get onto that. It's I use it for like different use cases of Obsidian. I think it's really handy for. So let's go back to that demo one. And here we go, we're back to what I had bookmarked or actually saved as a workspace. So you can then manage the workspace layouts here so you can overwrite one. Um, and here I'm going to delete that one. Now there is a cool community plugin called Workspaces Plus. I did used to use it quite heavily, but recently I've just been using bookmarks. I mean, I don't sort of find that I need very many different configurations. It's more like I need quick access to like a, a bunch of tabs, but they can all just be like tabs on a single window. And I don't, I used to use workspaces for like multiple windows and you know, the, the side panels are open or whatever. So I found myself using it less and less, but if that's still part of your workflow, then definitely check out workspaces plus, because I think it does add more functionality and enough functionality to the workspaces core plugin to make it useful. Those were the core plugins that I'm currently using. I've always thought that a lot of the value of Obsidian is in the plugins, but not necessarily the community plugins, although that's certainly part of it. I think that community plugins are so overwhelming and come with some security things that you have to be aware of. And if you don't want to deal with that, but you still want to get the most out of Obsidian, then start with the core plugins because there are a lot of functionalities in there that could mean that you're happy with core plugins and never have to do community plugins at all. So I would look into the ones that I've talked about. However, just because I'm not using something doesn't mean that you shouldn't. So play around with what you think would fit best into your workflows. If you'd like to check out more about the community plugin side of it, then check out this video where I go through the top 10 community plugins as of right now. Thank you for watching. Vi blagodanam.